Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca, and today we're going to be talking about the drug amlodipine, also known as Norvasc. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Amlodipine belongs to the calcium channel blocker drug classification. Calcium is required during the muscle contraction of our vascular smooth muscle and our cardiac muscle. Our blood vessels are lined with these vascular smooth muscle cells, which allow the blood vessels to either constrict or dilate. The way that these muscle cells normally get calcium is through the calcium channels. If the blood vessels are constricted, our blood pressure rises. If the blood vessels are dilated, our blood pressure lowers. So like we said, calcium is required during muscle contraction, which would cause our blood vessels to constrict. Calcium also increases the contractility of cardiac muscle cells, which are in the heart. Amlodipine, a calcium channel blocker, prevents calcium from entering the muscle cells, decreasing the vascular smooth muscle and cardiac muscle contraction. Amlodipine exerts a much stronger effect on vascular smooth muscle than it does on cardiac muscle. Therefore, the effects of amlodipine are primarily peripheral artery vasodilation and coronary artery vasodilation, resulting in a decrease in blood pressure and decrease in peripheral vascular resistance. Peripheral arteries are the arteries away from the heart, like in the arms and the legs, that supply blood and oxygen to the body. Coronary arteries are the arteries that supply the heart with blood and oxygen. Amlodipine is used in the treatment of hypertension and angina. Again, amlodipine causes peripheral vasodilation, which lowers blood pressure. For angina, the dilation of the coronary arteries and the decrease in peripheral vascular resistance reduces the workload of the heart, or it makes it easier for the heart to pump. It's easier for the heart to pump because the afterload, or the pressure that the heart has to overcome to pump blood into circulation, is lower. This allows the heart to use less energy or less oxygen, which is very beneficial in angina. Amlodipine can be used for chronic stable angina or vasospastic angina. Amlodipine has many side effects which stem from vasodilation. Vasodilation can cause hypotension or abnormally low blood pressure. Hypotension may manifest as dizziness, weakness, headaches, flushing, syncope, which is a loss of consciousness due to low blood pressure, orthostatic hypotension, and more. Amlodipine may also cause dysrhythmias, heart palpitations, and bradycardia due to its effect on cardiac muscle cells. Other side effects include edema, nausea, constipation, and many more. In clients with coronary artery disease, a rare increase in angina and myocardial infarction or heart attacks may occur. Use cautiously in older adults and clients with severe hepatic impairment due to decreased drug elimination. These clients may require lower doses of amlodipine, also used cautiously in clients with chronic heart failure and aortic stenosis. Taking NSAIDs may decrease the antihypertensive effects of amlodipine. Avoid drinking grapefruit juice with amlodipine as it can increase the drug absorption, resulting in hypotension and changes in heart rate. Other drugs that may interact with amlodipine include alcohol, nitrates, fentanyl, and other antihypertensives. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of amlodipine. Monitor heart rate and blood pressure before administration. Typically, if apical heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute or systolic blood pressure is less than 90, hold the medication and notify the provider. Especially for elderly clients, instruct clients to avoid rapid changes in position, such as changing from sitting to standing, to reduce the risk of orthostatic hypotension and falls. Some clients may be placed on a low-sodium diet while taking amlodipine. Amlodipine is administered orally and can be administered in a single daily dose. Lastly, as with most all antihypertensive medications, it is important not to discontinue amlodipine abruptly, but to instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions to reduce the risk of a hypertensive crisis. And that's about it for the basics of amlodipine. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.